There's over 250 Adobe CVEs and a very spooky Microsoft O'Day in the wild. Let's talk about them in the patch report. Hello everyone, I am Dustin Childs, Head of Threat Awareness here at Trend Micro Zero Day Initiative and our Chief Patch Wrangler, bringing you the latest security update news from Microsoft and Adobe known as the Patch Report. So let's get into the details of what Adobe has sent us because they have sent us a mountain of bugs, 254 CVEs. Ooh, if you're thinking to yourself, that's a lot, you're right, that's a lot, that's a new record for Adobe. But the good news is that most of these are actually cross-site scripting bugs in Experience Manager. So yes, you could lead to code execution, but maybe not as quite as serious as you might think. The really good news about all of these CVEs, none are publicly known at the time of the release, none are under active attack. And actually the uh, Experience Manager is priority three, according to Adobe. So take your time, I guess. The one priority one is for commerce and uh, this could lead to code execution. They do note that it's not under active attack right now, but considering that it is commerce and it is a priority one, if you're looking to prioritize, I would take a look at that. They also have 10 CVEs in Acrobat Reader, four of which came from the ZDI program, and uh, that is another big one since reader bugs are often exploited in the wild by ransomware gangs because people click on anything. Sorry about that. Let's move on to the Microsoft bugs. It's a much more reasonable 66 new CVEs from Microsoft in our usual components. A total of 70 CVEs. There's a couple Chrome and a one from Cert CC in there. 10 of these are critical. The rest are important. Um, it's really interesting to see the number of Office bugs in this release, but we'll get to that. Let's start with the bug that's under active attack, and this is WebDAV. And this is the ghost of Internet Explorer coming back to haunt us once more. Someone please get Ed and Lorraine uh, on the phone and get them here to exercise this because even though IE is deprecated and is no longer used, has been removed, the primary engine is still exists on Windows platforms and can be called by certain legacy applications, which appears to be what happening, what is happening here. Now, I really wanna call this one out because Microsoft has taken the extraordinary step of producing patches for out of support software, including Windows 8, Server 2012. That's a big deal. So I don't know how widespread the exploitation is, but it's significant enough that they're producing patches for these out-of-date operating systems. So this is really the big thing that you should be talking about in this release, this one O data that's circulating. I hope we get some additional information from the researchers who reported this soon, uh, cause it's very, very interesting. So Ed and Lorraine Warren, paging Ed and Lorraine Warren, uh, leave that Annabelle behind and come take care of IE please. Moving on, we have another interesting bug that's in net logon, and it's an EOP. It's a critical rated bug, and this is not one that's listed as publicly known, um, but you could get code execution just by sending a specially crafted authentication request to affected domain controllers. Neat, um, and although not specifically stated, that code execution would happen at the level of the net logon service, obviously since you're exploiting net logon, so yeah, and Microsoft says this is exploitation more likely. Yikes, um, I expect this one to be looked at closely. I don't know how realistic the exploitation is. I haven't dug that deep into the bug so far, but this is definitely one that people are going to try to target simply because it is sending code directly to a main controller and then ex exploitation, yay, hooray. Uh, the other bug that is publicly known but not exploited is this SMB client elevation of privilege. Uh, and this is interesting. Um, it does lead to system, but it leads to system in an interesting way. And really what you're trying to do is convince a user to click on a malicious SMB share. Uh, now, thankfully, we all know that users never click on anything. Hang on, I'm getting an update. No, I'm sorry, that's incorrect. Users click on everything. So uh, yeah, this is definitely gonna be something that's gonna be targeted because we've seen attacks like this in the wild in the past. This same type of attack where you have a malicious SMB server out there and you try to connect to it. This one is not currently under active exploit. It is publicly known. It was reported by I think four different researchers. So yeah, that's a, that's a bad one too. Speaking of bad ones, this is one of four baddies. And I could have picked any one of the critical office bugs for this. I just chose this one because it was the lowest numbered CVE. Preview pane is an attack vector in office. No user interaction. Lovely. Um, 
Yikes. So again, you've got something malicious showing up the preview pane of Outlook and it can be exploited just from that, just by looking at the preview pane, not actually having to click it. So yeah, there are a bunch of office bugs this month. Uh, these are the most serious ones. The other ones are more traditional open and own where the preview pane is not an attack vector, but definitely do not put off rolling out office patches this month. Uh, if anything, I would say prioritize office above where you normally would uh, because these bugs are continuing. This is two months in a row where we've seen a lot of office patches in a single release. So definitely take a look at that and uh, yeah, prioritize those things. and. Good luck with the preview pane. Uh, here is the table. You can see a lot of things here. Not too bad this week, this month, I'm sorry. Only 66 uh, CVEs. And I only know two that require extra work besides the uh, just applying the patch. I do want to note one of the Chrome bugs here was listed by Google as being under active attack when they released it earlier this month. Of course, it's now being consumed by uh, the uh, Edge, for, Edge for Chromium or whatever they're calling it these days. So again, looking at the re remaining critical patches, um, office bugs, like I said, there's a frightening looking bug in Power Automate, but Microsoft is just documenting that. They've already fixed it, so no user reaction there. There's an interesting SharePoint RCE that's listed as critical um, due to SQL injection. It does require low privileges, but those privileges are default for any user that's allowed to create a website on SharePoint RCE. This will be important later, remember that. There's some really interesting cryptography bugs too. There's one in Kerberos KDC, which allows uh, attackers to uh, execute their code on uh, impacted systems. Um, I don't know the exploitability on this one. Those types of bugs usually are very hard to exploit. Uh, there's also a similar bug in S channel. Um, you could uh, gain code execution through TLS connections. Again, these bugs are typically very difficult to exploit. Okay, and finally, I, I hate talking about this, but we have to talk about this. There's a bug in Windows Remote Desktop Services. If you say, hey, weren't there some bugs in that last month too? Yes, there were, including this one. It was silently patched last month and now is getting fixed this month. I'm not gonna go off on a diatribe about why silent patches are bad. I'm just gonna say Microsoft just missed this one. It was just a little whatever, but silent patching is bad. People, please stop it. And if you have connections to Microsoft, tell them no. Smack them on the nose with a newspaper and say, no, don't do that. Uh, moving on to the other code execution bugs, like I said, a bunch of open and known in Office. Um, these do require user interaction. Obviously, preview paint is not uh, an attack vector. So there's that. We have our monthly dose of RS bugs. Again, these seem to be just a common thing uh, in every update these days. Still have yet to see one exploited in the wild. Now, there are two deserialization bugs in SharePoint that are somewhat confusing because they do require uh, permissions, the same permissions I talked about earlier, the site owner permissions that anyone gets if you are an authorized user on a SharePoint site. These are listed as important instead of critical, even though the CVSS is exactly the same on all three bugs. And I can't explain why it's different. The only difference I can see is that these important bugs involve deserialization, while the critical bug is a SQL injection. I don't think SQL injection is that much more severe than deserialization. Maybe it's easier to exploit, but I've never known Microsoft to include ease of exploitation into severity ratings. So yeah, I don't know. Uh, the other uh, code execution bugs involve DLL planting on .NET and Visual Studio. Only a handful of EOP bugs this month, and uh, we've covered the ones that are important already. Otherwise, you're just leading to system. Uh, there is one thing you're gonna have to do a little bit extra if you're running the Windows SDK. Uh, Microsoft has a document that recommends essentially the care and feeding of SDK. Uh, so you need to look at that for further information. That's one of the two bugs where you need to go beyond just patching. There are two security feature bypasses in this month's release. First is an app control, and as you would expect, it bypasses app control. Uh, the other one is a shortcut file uh, security feature bypass. This one is not under active attack, but we've seen these be used in active attacks in the past. So definitely don't ignore these just because they don't seem that, that pretty. So moving on to the info disclosure bugs, there are actually more info disclosure bugs in this release than there are EOPs, which is very unusual. Uh, fortunately, 
almost all of them are just dumping random heaps of memory. Uh, this is very useful in chaining attacks together. You need to find what place in memory you're going to go, uh, but really can't be exploited on its own. The only real impact here uh, besides that is in the Windows Virtual Base Security, VBS, uh, which is not Vacation Bible School in this instance. I know it's that time in North America. Um, but it could result in the disclosure of secrets or privileged information. VBS is a newer feature in Windows, so I'm surprised it's getting attacked this quickly. Um, but that's uh, interesting. It'll be interesting to see what happens with VBS development in the, in the near term. We've got about a half dozen DOS bugs, but again, no real information. DHCP and LSA, LSAS. Microsoft says you can deny service to them. Well, yeah, that's that's kind of the definition of DOS bug, but it doesn't say if they blue screen, it doesn't say if it automatically restarts, it doesn't say if it, uh, you know, will recover after an attack. Um, I, I just don't know. They just don't want to give us any information. And finally, there's a single spoofing bug in the Nuance Digital Engagement Platform. I did look this one up, I'm not familiar with it, but apparently it's an AI thing that Microsoft has with healthcare providers. Uh, the bug itself is a cross-site scripting bug, but in addition to the patch, you need to go in and configure block cross-site scripting in the configurations. Why is this an option? Why is it like, no, no, enable cross-site scripting. Block, yes, yeah, so please, if you haven't already, block cross-site scripting. And there are new no new advisories this month. So that is our wrap up for June. I will return back in July on our update Tuesday there. Please follow the blog for all the latest information. And hey, stay safe out there. If you're in the Northern Hemisphere, stay cool. Have a nice ice beverage. Got some sparkling water right here. And uh, yeah, stay safe. May all your reboots be smooth and clean.